Welcome back to a guide to Australian spiders. Oh, and thanks for 8,000 subscribers by the way. This is the fourth video in the series overall, and the first one in the guide proper, with the previous three episodes being devoted to introductory concepts such as phylogeny and anatomy. From this video onwards, each episode will be focusing on a certain group of spiders, and they'll probably be covered in no particular order to avoid repetition. I suspect posting multiple consecutive episodes about similar spiders may get a little dull, although that's a bit rich coming from the guy who's been featuring the same two species of centipede since this channel's beginning. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the Chytophorinae, sometimes known as the tent spiders. These are araniomorph spiders, forming a subfamily within the Araniidae, the family that includes most of the orb-weaving spiders. Like all members of the Araniidae, the Chytophorinae are passive, mildly venomous, and thus essentially harmless to humans. The group is very widespread, occurring on every continent except Antarctica, and here in Australia, several species can be regularly encountered, particularly on the east coast. The Chytophorinae can be defined based on two synapomorphies. Easily the most noticeable is their web architecture. All members of this subfamily spin horizontal, somewhat three-dimensional webs, consisting of a very closely woven mesh with an extremely tight, permanent, non-sticky spiral. These webs are often surrounded by a tangle of irregular, non-sticky silk, which likely serves as a barrier against predators. In addition to this, the piriform spinning field, which is the portion of the anterior lateral spinnerets that contains piriform spigots, has been reduced to a narrow band, with spigots being absent toward the rear of the spinneret. Of course, the web architecture is likely to be the more useful identifier for the casual viewer. I can't imagine too many people encountering one of these spiders on their morning walk and going, "Oh, let me take a look at the anterior lateral spinnerets so I can examine the piriform spinning fields. The first genus assigned to this subfamily, and easily the most commonly encountered one in Australia, is Chytophora. This widespread genus contains over 40 species, many of which occur in the Asia-Pacific region. 14 species are known from Australia, and their distinctive webs are a common sight in both urban and forested areas. Members of the genus Chytophora share several characteristics. First, the combined lengths of the patella and tibia on the second, third and fourth pairs of legs are slightly shorter than the corresponding femur on each of the aforementioned leg pairs, as well as the combined metatarsus and tarsus. This admittedly may be rather hard to notice when looking at these spiders from most angles, as they, of course, do not hold their legs completely straight. The legs of Chytophora are also relatively thick when compared to those of many other orb weavers. The lateral eyes are slightly separated from the median eyes, and the posterior eye row is often recurved. In other words, the ends of the curve point towards the rear of the animal. In many species, the opisthosoma tends to be somewhat humped and slightly overhangs the prosoma. Now time to cover a few noteworthy species. This is how the guide as a whole is likely to be structured. After highlighting the characteristics of a particular genus, I'll go over some of the more notable species within the genus. Much as I hate to discriminate, realistically speaking, I'd never be able to illustrate and talk about every single spider species in the country. What is possibly the largest and most familiar out of Australia's Chytophora species is Chytophora malagensis, commonly known as the dome web spider. This species is prevalent throughout much of Southeast Asia, and is named after the Malakas, an Indonesian archipelago also known as the Maluku Islands. 
Here in Australia, Chytophora malacensis mostly occurs along the continent's northeastern coastline, especially Queensland. These animals often inhabit eucalyptus forests, but are also abundant in more developed locations such as parks and gardens, and their large dome-shaped webs, sometimes over half a metre across, are a common and conspicuous sight in many suburbs. The spiders spend most of their time sitting upside down at the centre of the dome. Chytophora malacensis is quite an easily recognisable spider, especially in the case of females. The dorsal surface of the opisthosoma is elaborately patterned, with a large number of variably sized white blotches peppered over an orange, brown or black backdrop. The opisthosoma also bears two prominent bumps known as tubercules. Males and younger females are yellowish green, with a less pronounced pattern. These are fairly sizeable spiders, with females attaining body lengths of approximately 30 mm, with a leg span of around 60 mm. Males, as is typical for the family Araniidae, are considerably smaller than the females, with an 8mm body length. While it is not uncommon to find these spiders alone, Chytophora malacensis is often somewhat gregarious, and can frequently be encountered living in small groups, though they can sometimes form immense colonies consisting of tens or even hundreds of individuals. Within such aggregations, each spider constructs and remains within its own web, just as a solitary spider would. And even though adjacent webs often interlock with one another, aggression between neighbouring individuals is rare. Sometimes other species of spider also coexist with Chytophora malacensis in these colonies, such as Leucogy dromedaria and the golden orb weavers from the genus Trichonephala. In other words, Chytophora malacensis society is rather inclusive, well, unless you're a fly. These neighbourhoods present a number of benefits for their arachnid citizens, such as increased protection, especially for egg sacs, and greater web building efficiency. I do question my usage of the word neighbourhood in this context, but to be fair, Chytophora malacensis probably squabble with their fellow spiders far less often than their human counterparts do. I've certainly never yet observed neighbouring individuals flipping the bird at each other or complaining about their kids. There are, however, drawbacks to these aggregations, namely the ease at which parasites and diseases may be spread when so many animals live in such close proximity. Next in line is Chytophora exanthematica, one of my personal favourites. This species has a very similar distribution to Chytophora malacensis, and often occupies these same habitats as well. Like Chytophora malacensis, Chytophora exanthematica does well in urban environments, and can often be found in parks and gardens, though it's rather less noticeable than the former due to its more cryptic habits and appearance. This is a moderately large spider, somewhat smaller and stockier than Chytophora malacensis, with females reaching a body length of approximately 25mm. This species spins a web that could in simple terms be described as a slightly smaller, inverted version of a Chytophora malacensis web, being somewhat bowl-shaped instead of dome-shaped. The bowl is surrounded by an irregular tangle, especially above, which provides extra anchorage for the main body of the web, as well as protection by obstructing predators. While some spiders are meticulous cleaners that will promptly remove any debris that gets stuck in their web, Chytophora exanthematica are about as keen on keeping their living space tidy as the average teenager. But it seems there's benefits to being a slob, at least if you're a spider. The dead leaves that accumulate in the webs of these animals provide an additional degree of shelter, just in case being surrounded on all sides by multiple layers of webbing isn't quite enough. Seems a tad excessive to me, but then again, I don't have to be worried about being paralysed by a wasp and getting fed to its baby. So who am I to judge? 
Unlike Chiatophora malacensis, this species doesn't form large, close-knit aggregations, although it is not uncommon to find several individuals living in fairly close proximity. And any reasonably large tree may host numerous separate webs hidden in the foliage. However, even with this attention to social distancing, Chiatophora exanthematica can't seem to fully escape the company of other spiders, as their webs are often occupied by a smaller spider called Argyroides physifrons, which feed on the resident Chiatophora's leftovers as well as any prey items too small for it to eat. Chiatophora exanthematica has a rather distinctive appearance among Australian Chiatophora species. So even disregarding the unique web, it's pretty difficult to get this species confused with any of its close relatives. The Opisthosoma is roughly triangular in shape and adorned with two pairs of humps, a widely spaced pair situated at the front and a very closely positioned pair located at the rear. These posterior humps are why the species is sometimes referred to as the two-tailed spider. The coloration of this species is quite variable, ranging from subdued, such as black, brown or grey, to more vibrant colours such as red, orange or yellow. In many instances, the opisthosoma is marked with a pair of pale, slightly wavy lines, which vary in intensity between individuals, from very bold to so faint that they appear almost absent. The coloration and overall shape of Chiatophora exanthematica allows these spiders to effectively camouflage themselves among the dead leaves that settle in their webs. Now let's take a look at Chiatophora herta. This is a small species, with females measuring approximately 10mm in body length. Unlike the previous two species covered, both of which are widespread throughout the Asia-Pacific, Chiatophora herta is predominantly restricted to Australia, with the bulk of its range being along the coasts of Queensland and New South Wales. Like the other species covered, it is common in urban settings as well as forested locations. Chiatophora herta spins a conical web, which in typical fashion for the subfamily Chiatophorinae is surrounded and protected by an irregular tangle of non-sticky silk. At the apex of the cone is a white cap, often with various items of debris such as small leaves and twigs interwoven within the silk. It is inside this small retreat that the spider resides, obscured from sight unless the web is viewed from beneath. At night or when a prey item gets entangled in the web, the spider emerges from its hideout to hunt. Like Chiatophora exanthematica, this species doesn't form close-knit colonies, though numerous webs can often be found on the same tree. The spider itself is, as aforementioned, substantially smaller than the previous two Chiatophora species covered, and has a rather compact build with a rounded opisthosoma and short, thick legs. The opisthosoma is pale grey with white blotches, and the legs possess grey, brown and white bands. Although given the spider's reclusive habits, the structure of the web is likely to be a more reliable identifier for the casual viewer than the appearance of the spider itself. Another species, Chiatophora parnasia, is also present in Australia, and bears a very strong resemblance to Chiatophora herta, with which it is often confused. However, it is allegedly smaller in size. It also appears to be more widespread, particularly towards Australia's south, with one source stating that it is the most common member of its genus in Tasmania. Although given the fact that the two species do overlap in range and can be very easily mixed up, it is likely that some records of Chiatophora parnasia are actually Chiatophora herta and vice versa. Now let's move on from genus Chiatophora to take a look at the closely related, albeit lesser known genus, Chiatobil. Chiatobil is a monotypic genus, meaning it contains only a single species. That species is Chiatobil darwini, which is endemic to Australia. 
This species has a broad but seemingly rather scattered distribution, and has been recorded in the Northern Territory, Western Australia, Queensland and New South Wales. A notable feature that distinguishes female Kyatobill from Kyatophora is the presence of a spoon-shaped scape on the epigyne, which is absent in Kyatophora species. Mature males possess a semicircular rim at the base of the symbium of the pedipalp, again a unique feature that separates the genus from Kyatophora. The webs are bowl-shaped, somewhat resembling cleaner, scaled-down versions of Chytophora exanthematica webs, and like those of Chytophora species, are surrounded by a tangle of non-sticky silk. The spider resides upside down on the underside of the bowl. These spiders appear to favour grasses as their home sites, and in common with many Chytophora species, webs of numerous individuals can often be found in close proximity. Kytobill darwini is a small spider, with a body length below 5mm. Males are of comparable size to the females, which is rather unusual for the family Araniidae. The carapace of these spiders is yellowish-brown, and almost entirely glabrous, meaning without hair, although a sparse covering of white hairs is present on the caput, especially around the eyes. Along the edges of the carapace are broad grey lateral bands, and a grey median stripe runs along it, forking toward the front. The legs are yellowish brown with grey spots. The dorsal surface of the opisthosoma is light brown with a dense peppering of irregular silvery white spots, as well as a dark grey patch situated toward the rear. The ventral surface of the opisthosoma which may be among the most visible parts given the spider's tendency to rest upside down, is dark grey with various brown markings, and four pairs of silvery white patches toward the edge, of which the second pair is the largest. And that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this video, especially since it is the first non-introductory episode in the series, if any of the anatomy or taxonomy related terms I used were difficult to understand, feel free to take a look at the first three episodes, or ask me in the comments. If you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, I shall see you again very soon.